Hey guys, and welcome to an exciting update video. Last month, Adobe released a new version for Premiere Pro, which is version 2017.1, which is the April 2017 release. Now, I know I'm about a month late making a video on this, but Adobe has added a lot of really cool features into Premiere Pro, primarily a brand new type tool in the Essential Graphics panel, as well as a new Essential Sound panel. There's also additional features like better integration with team projects and a very easy way for you to share your work on Adobe Stock to make some money. In this video, I want to take you through the biggest neat changes, which in my mind is really the new type tool and the essential graphics panel, as well as the new essential sound panel. Those tools really help you optimize and streamline your workflow when you're dealing with titles or with audio in Premiere Pro. And in this video, I want to show you some of the cool stuff that you can do with them. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe Premiere Pro and here I have the almost finished edit for our visual effect short film It's a Bomb. The very first thing I want to show you with version 2017.1 is the new type tool and the essential graphics panel. If you remember in order to create titles in Adobe Premiere Pro you used to come down here click onto the new item icon and go new title which now is no longer available because in your toolbox you will find some new tools. You will find the new type tool. This allows you to type text or vertical text and you also have a pen, rectangle and an ellipse tool to help you create shapes for your titles. For now, let's simply click on the type tool and the way to create titles in the new version of Premiere Pro and this is one thing I actually really like is you can simply come up into your preview window, click where you want to create your title and type some text. You can then press escape to return to the selection tool and then position your title anywhere where it makes sense. Premiere Pro has automatically created a new item on my timeline and this is a new graphic item so any elements you create with the type tools or with your shape tools will get placed within this graphic element. If I move the timeline indicator to a position where there is no graphic element in my sequence and I then for example let's say I want to use the rectangle tool and draw a shape, this will automatically create a new graphic element. Let's delete this and go back to our original title. Make sure you have the graphic element selected. And now if we draw a shape, this shape is actually added into the same graphic element. So here's now a graphic element or a title in the new world of Premiere Pro that contains both the text as well as this rectangle. You may already have noticed that in my effect control with the graphics element selected, I now have a text effect and I have a shape effect and you can actually modify these in here so you can have text selectors and you can animate and keyframe a whole bunch of properties for this title but a much easier way to at least simply lay out your title in the first place is to use the new essential graphics panel. You can bring up the new essential graphics panel by coming up into window and essential graphics. Let me grab this into the screen for you and the essential graphics panel contains two separate tabs. For one, there's a browse option and this will show you all of the graphics templates that you have available. By default, the new version of Premiere Pro I think includes 25 ready-made titles that you can literally just grab and drag and drop into your sequence. This will load the motion graphics templates and all of the contents within it. it might take a second or two. And then you have a new title. Let's delete this one again, return to the title we created and reselect it and you will see it pop up again in the edit tab of the essential graphics panel. And in here you can see you've got a text layer and you have a shape layer. And the order of these does actually matter. So you can actually rearrange them by dragging and dropping them. And let me actually grab this rectangle and place it right over my text and I'll rescale it as well. So it kind of extends the length of the text right now. In my essential graphics panel, the shape is on top of the text. So if I rearrange these to drag the text to the top, you'll see the text is visible over my rectangle, which makes total sense. With the text layer selected, I get a whole bunch of options to modify, for example, the opacity or to move it around. I can set up master styles and these are kind of like the old styles in the old title tool where you can kind of predefine styles and just apply them like a template onto these. But I don't really use these much because the essential graphics panel allows me to create motion graphics templates which is already pre-templated title so this is like a template within a template doesn't make too much sense to me but you might find it useful obviously you can also change the font and 
Adobe, please get rid of these horrible drop down selectors. They do not work for anything that has more than five or 10 items in them. I can't even mouse wheel through this. I literally have to go down to the bottom and click and hold on this arrow to start scrolling through this horrendously long list. And it's the same in the export settings. Just implement something like an editable multi text field, something that's just a little bit more user friendly. Please, I'd greatly appreciate it. And then obviously you can change things like leading and kerning and the color and you can add a drop shadow. Same thing for the shape layer. If you have this selected, you got a bunch of different options to modify it and change the color, do all sorts of other cool things in here. And if you want to add more items to this title, you can either use the new tools and just kind of draw them into the preview window. Just make sure you have your graphics elements selected, otherwise it'll create a new one. Or obviously you can actually come in here and there's a little new layer and you can create a new layer and that can be text, vertical text, a rectangle or an ellipse. Or, and this is kind of cool, you can actually bring in graphics. So I can bring in images or other media and kind of use this as part of my title. Now, while the tools for creating this title have changed and are slightly different, one of the advantages of this new implementation of how to do titles in Premiere Pro is that you can animate the elements individually. So let's close the essential graphics panel, come back to the beginning of our graphic clip and let's make this effects control panel a little bit bigger. Because the text and the shapes and anything else you added to your title are available as effects, on this new graphic object means you can keyframe and animate them. So let's say, for example, I've got my shape here and I've got my text here. So what I can do at the very beginning, let's expand this transform and let's drag the text off the screen. Let's set a keyframe and let's do the same thing with the shape layer. Let's expand this transform. Maybe I'll make this fade in instead. So let's set the opacity to zero and set a keyframe. Let's just go forward a little bit and let's animate this to come in and on our text layer let's come down to the transform and let's drag the text in so the text will animate to kind of come in and then the red will fade in so if i now scrub through this and there you go i have now created a simple animated title in adobe premiere pro one small feature I really would love Adobe to add, especially now that you can animate elements of titles individually is motion blur, which is still not available in Adobe Premiere Pro. Yes, you can do it with a transform effect, but that only applies to the entire layer. So things like this, you kind of got to manually use directional blurs and other tricks to make this look like there's motion blur on them. Please Adobe, just add motion blur to animated elements in Premiere Pro. It can't be that terribly difficult. After Effects already does it wonderfully. So, you know, if you could bring that across again, greatly appreciate it. The cool thing with the new type tool and the motion graphics templates in the new version of Premiere Pro is that I can now export my title with any animation and all of the elements that I've embedded into it as a template. In order to do that, simply right click the graphic element in your sequence and select export as motion graphics template. Give your template a useful name and then you can determine where you want to export it to. You can either export it to your local essential graphics template as a file onto your local drive or to a creative cloud library. Mine aren't really set up for anything. So I'm just going to export it to my essential graphics library. Hit OK. And now let's come up in the window and bring the essential graphics panel up again. Let's expand this. And this time I'm on the browse tab and in my essential graphics library, I now have my simple title. So I now have this title embedded as a template in my library. And I can simply reuse this by dragging and dropping it onto my sequence. And this is now the title with all of the animations. And I can now simply come in here. Let's close the essential graphics panel, select my type tool and change the text. And now I have the exact same title with the same animations with the new text. And these elements, once I've exported them, are available across all of my projects. So I can set up some really cool title templates and just reuse them in every single project. Now, while you can already create and export some really cool animated titles directly from Premiere Pro, one of the power of the new Essential Graphics is that it fully integrates with Adobe After Effects. So in my Essential Graphics panel, I can also import templates that I've created in Adobe After Effects. So these are motion graphics templates created with Adobe After Effects. I can simply import them. And obviously After Effects is much more powerful in terms of what you can do with effects and titles and animations. But the great thing is I can then simply use them in my Premiere project simply by dragging and dropping them in. And these ones can look a whole lot more complicated than what you can do in Premiere Pro. And with the template selected in your edit tab within the essential graphics panel, you can now modify all properties that some motion graphics designer exposed for you 
in Adobe After Effects. So without knowing Adobe After Effects, you can use some really, really cool and complex titles. And I think the new motion graphics templates are absolutely fantastic. I hope Adobe will fix up some issue with some of the user interface controls that are a bit unusable and add some motion blur and just keep improving it with future versions. Let's close everything down and let me jump over into another sequence and let's talk about the new essential sound panel. Personally, I've actually never done a whole lot of sound work directly in Premiere Pro beyond just some very basic things. I've always exported things into Cubase or Audition to do all of my audio work just because I found the workflow with audio in Premiere Pro a little bit cumbersome. In case you're not aware, if you go into your effects within Premiere Pro and expand the audio effects, there are actually quite a large number of really cool audio effects like DSs, choruses, distortion, there's compression, EQs and a whole lot of other tools. But unless you know how to use these things from a technical point of view, if you just want to say, I want to make this sound clearer or I want a little bit of echo on these sound effects or I want to make this a little bit softer, how do you use these tools to do that? If you don't know the technicalities, you can't. But now with the Essential Sound Panel, that is exactly what Adobe is trying to address. You could find the new Essential Sound Panels under Window and then Essential Sound. The Essential Sound Panel lets you categorize the sound within your sequence into different categories and then apply effects to them based on your intent. As an example, let's select a clip with some audio in my sequence and I now have four different options. I can mark this sound as dialogue, as music, sound effects or ambience. This one obviously is a piece of dialogue, so let's select dialogue and let me make this just a little bit bigger. And now I have a whole bunch of different options, but these ones aren't really as technical. There's things like I can enhance speech or I can apply an equalizer, which is really just like your radio equalizer. And then this lets me make this sound like an old radio or background voice or a podcast voice, or I can improve the presence. Um, I can also under loudness, I can auto match my loudness because sometimes what happens, you have some clips that are rather soft, some are a bit louder and you kind of want to have them all at an equal level. So you can simply select auto match and this will automatically match up all of the clips within the dialogue category to a standard level. Then if you have issues like noise or hums, you can click into repair and there you can say, I want to reduce the noise or reducing low level rumbles or you can de-S it, which is, you know, when you have a lot of the sharp S sounds, you want to take that out of your audio. So you can apply all sorts of cool things here. You can then add reverb so you can make it sound like there's an echo on it and you can adjust the loudness of that and you can tweak the volume. So this allows you to apply a whole lot of different effects without necessarily knowing the technicalities or what's happening under the hood. Now, if you are a more technical person, let me drag this over to the right hand side. With this clip selected under my effects controls, you will now see a whole number of audio effects applied to it. And as you tick and untick some of these effects within the essential sound panels, you'll see more and more effects being added and modified. So this essential sound panel is really just an easier interface on top of all of these audio effects. So you don't have to know what an FFT filter is. You really just don't. You just use the essential sound panel saying, I want to reduce the rumble. Um, however, if you do know what it is and you want to tweak it, you can obviously always come into the audio effects and tweak these ones. Personally, I actually really like using the essential sound panel. It's really nice and easy. And once you've got a consistent setup, you can then, once you've got everything set up for dialogue, let's say you've you know reduced the rumble a bit, you made them a bit clearer, um, you add a reverb. I probably wouldn't add a reverb on a dialogue track necessarily, at least not me talking to the camera. Maybe I wanted to enhance the speech and obviously I'm a guy. Maybe I want to go EQ and just kind of add the vocal presence just a little bit. And then you can save that as a preset. Hit OK. And now if I select a different clip that doesn't have any category applied to it yet, rather than selecting a dialogue, music, sound effects, ambience, I can actually just come into my presets and go dialogue tutorial preset. Hit that and all of the settings I've just set up will be applied to this clip as well. Obviously, you can also select a whole group of clips. So you can have a whole list of clips selected that you can then apply categories to right now because two of them have a category already and this one does not. If I select only the ones that do not, I can then say all of these ones are sound effects. So these settings are now being applied to all of the audio clips that I have selected at the time. So let's tweak this a little bit to whatever you want. Obviously, these different categories give you different options. For example, let's mark one of these ones at the end. So if I select that and mark it as a sound effect, obviously, again, I can match the loudness across all of my sound effects audio clips. 
I can then add some reverb, which is an echo, and I can also pan it. So this one will make the sound appear more on the left side or the right side of your speakers, which is really useful for sound effects. If you use the music category, so at the bottom here, I obviously have a music track. So let's mark this one as a music track. Again, I can match the loudness. The other cool thing with music, I can actually change the duration. And if I do this right now, this clip is 40 seconds long. If I mark this to be 30 seconds long because I may want it to match the length of my video, this is going to shorten my clip, but it is going to try to maintain my pitch. As long as you don't go too crazy on changing the duration, that actually works really, really well to kind of just make your clip a little bit shorter or a little bit longer without really making it sound much different. Obviously, if your duration is a, you know, a tenth of what it originally was, it's gonna sound pretty different, but that's what you have for music. And then obviously you also have ambience. So if you've recorded background noise for a short film and you wanna mark that as ambience, you can go into ambience. And then again, you can match the loudness, which you can in all categories. You can add some reverb and you can increase the stereo width. This is really cool because it will help make the ambience sound like it's coming from all around you. And so it'll just feel a little bit more immersive. Personally, I'm actually a really big fan of this Essential Sound Panel. It makes it so easy to just go through my videos, especially when I'm editing them, just to mark things as dialogue or sound effects or the music track and just tweak them a little bit in here without me having to take this whole project out into Adobe Audition or into Cubase or some other audio editing program just to get the audio to sound nice. Really big fan of the Essential Sound Panel. Hopefully there'll be a few more options coming into it over the time, but for now, I think this is a really, really useful tool and I highly recommend that you start using it. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please show your support by liking, favoriting and sharing it with the world. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.